This season, we've been talking about the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Recently, we've been discussing the relationship between heavenly eternity and what we call time, but as we come to the end of this season, it seems there's one more thing that needs addressing. Given the kind of eager rebelliousness and defiance against the laws of God that seems to be almost universal among Western nations these days, nations which claim to have large numbers of Christians in them, you really have to wonder, are people just afraid of going to heaven? If so, do they have any good reasons to be afraid of heaven? In this episode, we'll examine a few reasons why some people might fear heaven and see if there are any good ways of dealing with those fears. Fear number one. I'm afraid that God doesn't want me to desire any good things other than Him. Answer. And we know that to them that love God, all things work together unto good, to such as, according to His purpose, are called to be saints. Romans 8:28. So God does everything for a reason. Now, God created the physical universe, and He wouldn't have done that if it could only serve to distract people from Him. So it makes sense to think that God made the universe intending for us to appreciate its goodness. Since God is more good than any creation, he wants us to love him more than any creation. The real problem here is that I've often heard it said that we have to stay detached from things that are not God. That sounds exceedingly restrictive unless you understand God's nature. Hence it is manifest that God alone has every kind of perfection by his own essence. Summa Theologica, first part, question six, article three. In short, as long as something is good, appreciating it helps us to appreciate God. So, not God, or worldly things, just means imperfect things. But godly things means things that are perfect. To say that in heaven, jars, or golf, or tea will come to a screeching halt is incorrect, since God is the perfection of jars, the perfection of golf, the perfection of tea, etc. We look forward to heaven so that we can finally enjoy his perfection, and the perfection of those around him as well, since no one can enter heaven without being perfected. In a certain sense, God is as much universe-like as person-like, in that the good things within him are the fulfillment of all the other good things in the universe. So, God does want us to desire good things in addition to him, but what he really wants is for us to desire the perfect things that he offers us. All other good things are essentially signposts pointing us in that direction. Fear number two. I'm afraid that heaven won't have animals, plants, mountains, and so on. Answer. Heaven will contain the perfection of everything that was good here on earth. Therefore, it will contain not only animals, plants, and mountains, but perfect animals, plants, and mountains, all perfected by God. Fear number three. I'm afraid that heaven will consist only of a bunch of people running around serving each other and never enjoying anything. Answer. When you're exposed to absolute perfection, enjoyment of it is guaranteed, no matter what else you happen to be doing. Therefore, even if we do spend time serving one another in heaven, it won't lessen our enjoyment as it does here on earth. Fear number four. I'm afraid that everyone in heaven will be boring. Answer. To be boring is to fall short of perfection in some area, and God's presence in heaven perfects everyone, so nobody in heaven will be boring. Fear number five. I'm afraid that I wouldn't be free to make decisions in heaven. Answer. As we've been discussing in recent episodes, heaven doesn't affect our ability to make choices or take actions. The nature of the saints remains the same forever, and they always know what the right thing to do is, but that doesn't mean the saints can't make choices. Fear number six. I'm afraid that I wouldn't be powerful, wise, or rich enough to be happy in heaven. Answer. Again, since heaven contains all goodnesses and perfects everyone, you would be powerful, wise, and rich enough in heaven to be happy. Fear number seven. I'm afraid that there won't be adversaries in heaven, which would make it boring, right? Answer. Heaven contains everything that's good, including all appropriate challenges to bring pleasure and contentment. Those challenges just don't endanger people's lives or cause harm anymore. A good example of what this means is a video game or simulation in which you can test your skills, but you have extra lives in case you mess up. Fear number eight. I'm afraid of losing my physical appearance or physical quirks in heaven. Answer. 
Appearance and physical quirks are another utterly subjective element, which we may identify with on earth, but like everything else, the appearance of people will be brought to perfection in heaven. However, again, since appearance is subjective, its perfection seems to be only in its conformity to our will. If that's true, the saints in heaven will look just the way they wish to. Fear number nine. I'm afraid of losing my memories in heaven. Answer. Like everything else, memories are brought to perfection in heaven. That means that the saints see what happened to them in this life with a greater clarity and an understanding of God's purpose through it all. However, they don't lose their memories as such. After all, the perfection of memory isn't forgetting things, but remembering them perfectly. Fear number 10. I'm afraid I might not make it to heaven. Answer. Now you're on the right track. Next time. What are the Beatitudes?